Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick Saint Joseph Saint Raphael the Archangel San Roque San Lorenzo Ruiz San Pedro Calungsod In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate St. Mary Magdalene, the Apostle to the Apostles. And we pray that through her intercession today, our hearts might be changed and converted to the good news of our risen Lord. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, you we glorify you, we, glorify we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King O oh God, God, Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. 
you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son entrusted Mary Magdalene before all others with announcing the great joy of the resurrection, grant, we pray, that through her intercession and example, we may proclaim the living Christ and come to see Him reigning in your glory who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even if he once knew Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him so no longer. So, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, the new things have come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. O God, you are my God, whom I seek. For you, my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet, shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant leaps, my mouth shall praise you. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings, I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark 
and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. Mary stayed outside the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he told her. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The good news that we have all listened to from the Gospel passage is perhaps the greatest conversion story in the life of Mary Magdalene. She was healed by Jesus. Demons were expelled from her. But I think the story of our passage today is the greatest conversion that Mary Magdalene underwent. And that is the conversion of her heart. If we would look closely in our gospel passage today, when Mary Magdalene saw the tomb empty, she did not immediately say, The Lord is risen. What did she think? The Lord is missing. Yun ang una niyang naisip, no? Nung nakita niyang walang laman ang libingan ni Jesus, hindi niya agad sinabi ang magandang balita na buhay si Jesus. Ang naisip lang niya, nawawala ang katawan ni Jesus. She thought Jesus was still dead. And so she was weeping. And when she saw two angels, she even asked them, Have you seen the body of Jesus? If you know where the body was laid, please tell me so that I could bury the body properly. All along, Mary Magdalene thought Jesus was dead, that the body of Jesus was only missing. But then, she encountered the teacher. She encountered the Savior. And she said, I have seen the Lord. That is the greatest change in the heart of Mary Magdalene. At the beginning, she did not yet believe that Jesus was risen even if the tomb was already empty. But later on, Jesus appeared to her and she became the apostle to the apostles because she was the one 
who gave the good news to the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that the Lord is risen. That is why in our first reading today, from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, St. Paul explains this conversion. St. Paul said in our first reading, from now on, we do not regard Christ only in the flesh, but we now know Jesus as someone not according to the flesh, but a new creation. We have become a new creation. Maybe from the announcement of St. Mary Magdalene that the Lord is risen, the apostles, like Mary Magdalene, were also converted. They have now believed that the Lord is truly risen. My dear brothers and sisters, Mary Magdalene, as apostle to the apostles, brings good news to us. And we pray that this good news of Mary Magdalene will change our hearts, will change our minds, will change our perception and view of things. Just uh, last uh, Sunday, when I celebrated the Mass, one woman changed my way of thinking. There was a, a woman who came here with an urn. And she was asking the urn to be blessed. And I asked her, Sino po itong namatay na daladala ninyo? Sabi niya, He is my husband. He has been working as a doctor in uh, a hospital for so many years. He was affected by COVID-19 and he died last April. And usually, whenever there are people bringing urns here with their loved ones who died because of COVID-19, lagi ang sinasabi nila, Father, please pray for us. Father, please pray for me. I am suffering terribly. Please pray for my family. We are really in grief. But I did not hear that from her. Alam nyo ang sabi niya sa akin? I was waiting for her to tell me, Father, please pray for me also because I am very sad. You know what she told me? Father, please pray that COVID-19 will stop. I don't know if the woman is also a doctor. But it seems to me that she was not just thinking of herself of her family. She was thinking of many others who can still be affected by COVID-19. She did not just tell me, Father, please pray for me, my family. I am sad. I am grieving. But I was surprised by her words. She said, Father, please pray that COVID-19 will stop. I am sure, like Mary Magdalene, her heart, her eyes have now seen that her husband may be dead physically, but she knows he is alive. And now we who are remaining here are still in need of healing. Not only them, not only their family, but all of us are in need of healing. And that encounter with that woman changed also a perspective in my, in my mind, in my heart. How a woman, a woman who had been bereaved by the death of her husband can still think of others. I consider her 
the Mary Magdalene who came to me and said, I have seen the Lord. The Lord is truly risen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us allow the encounter with our risen Lord change our hearts and lead ourselves, our lives to conversion. Amen. Please stand. Mary Magdalene experienced the joy of encountering Jesus on his resurrection. May this glorious event bring meaning and renewal to our lives. For every prayer, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer that the Church of God may be renewed in the risen Christ and bring His message of hope and love to all the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the community of believers may bear witness of Christ's resurrection through their example and constant conversion from sin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who are in the dark tomb of sin may find in Jesus the strength and inspiration to rise to a life of faithfulness to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who feel disheartened by the seemingly unconquerable suffering may find in the resurrection the courage to continue their quest for a better life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have passed from this life may be forgiven of their sins by Jesus, our Redeemer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, May we welcome the good news of the resurrection and our future life with you. Grant, we ask, that we may experience the fruit of his resurrection in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings presented in commemoration of St. Mary Magdalene, whose homage of charity was graciously accepted by your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to glorify you in all things, Almighty Father, whose mercy is not less than your power through Christ our Lord. He appeared in the garden and revealed himself to Mary Magdalene, who had loved him in life, witnessed him dying on the cross, sought him as he lay in the tomb, and was the first to adore him, newly risen from the dead. He honored her with the office of being an apostle to the apostles, so that the good news of new life might reach the ends of the earth. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Mary Magdalene, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May the holy reception of your mysteries, Lord, instill in us that persevering love with which St. Mary Magdalene 
clung resolutely to Christ, her Master, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Yours, we give ourselves, we give ourselves, we give ourselves.